Okay, well, good morning, y'all. Thank you for coming to this little event. Uh, I was uh, tapped to give uh, the ground rounds, and uh, as I typically do, I picked something that was much larger than I thought it would be. So it <laughs> makes it a very interesting uh, uh, little experience to try to learn as much as I can so that I can try to uh, put things in as few words as possible when we're here. Um, basically, I wanted to talk about uh, one of the, uh, the, the latest uh, situations in uh, immunotherapy, which is the use of chimeric antigen receptor T cells as a way of combating cancer. Um, I put on here a glioblastoma. It's really not hugely effective with glioblastoma. It's one of the, one of the, the targets, uh, and it's something that I'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, this treatment is more effective with things like lymphomas, that are, that are diffuse in the body. If you have a solid tumor, particularly something that presents different antigens as it develops, you have a problem with this particular treatment. Because for one thing, these are cells that are floating around in the blood and they're going to attach to a surface by means of receptors on that surface. And the antibodies are chimeric antigen receptors that are on the surface of those cells. Since glioblastoma is a solid tumor, everything that's on the inside doesn't get attacked. Glioblastoma also can be um, uh, pretty diverse in terms of what it presents on the surface, protein-wise. So it, it, you could be missing something um, by using this. But since glioblastoma is, is such a huge issue, and having a, um, having a sustainable treatment would be very desirable versus having to do surgery and then the prospect of them doing it again or whatever it happens. Wherever. So anyway, let me describe how all of this works. We'll see how it goes. Ah, okay. So as probably everybody realizes, you know, oncology is is a very big deal. There are, um, obviously are a lot of drugs that are being used. There's, uh, according to this, 1.7 million people diagnosed in the U.S. Uh, with cancer in 2018. So some of them have yet to happen. Um, and Regarding clinical trials, there are about 250 small molecule antibody-based uh, immunotherapeutics that are being studied right now. So if you went on clinicaltrials.gov and just took a look, you'd have page after page after page of these things. Um, last year, there were over 1,100 clinical trials that used a combination of uh, a protein that blocks um, the uh, the way the tumors respond to the immune response along with another treatment. So what that means is that something like the uh, uh, chimeric antigen receptor or these so-called checkpoint inhibitors are often used in combination with other drugs so they can have more than one way to try to keep cancer from proliferating. Uh, at this point, there are two drugs that are approved for this CAR-T therapy, uh, Kimria and Yescarta, and the price tags are up here. Uh, that seems like a lot of money, but let me talk, talk about one little aspect of this that maybe not in the case of glioblastoma, but with diffuse tumors. This is a single treatment. What happens is this is infused into the body. They're living cells that have been transformed in a laboratory to present the antigen that the cell will see and thereby kill the cancer cell. These living cells that are transfused into the body will proliferate ideally for the lifetime of the patient. Now you have other issues that can come along with immune suppression and things like that that can, that can be issues for this. But in the ideal, this is a single treatment and it'll last for decades. Uh, this hasn't been around for decades, so there's no guarantees on it. There's no statistics on, it, on that in particular. Um, yes. Okay, let's go to the next thing here. So the uh, chimeric antigen receptors are um, engineered on T cells that are taken from the patient's body. So a patient is taken in, into the hospital, uh, they, they remove a lot of cells, they take the white blood cells, they select for T cells, they do some, these things go into a laboratory where there is Biochemical engineering is done on the T cell genetically so that they will put on the surface of the T cell specific receptors that will bind to that specific cancer. 
So there are proteins on these cancers that are already identified as being suitable targets that are found in the surface of cancer cells. If uh, the immune cell uh, doesn't see this thing, it's going to be useless. And the immune cell has to combine with the antigen that's on the surface of the, of the cancer cell for the immune cell to be able to do anything damaging to that cancer cell. So um, <clears throat> anyway. The receptors are similar to a monoclonal antibody. They're not exactly monoclonal antibodies, but they're, they're, they're similar in their structure. They have the kind of shape and whatever, so, and, and, they'll, and they bind at multiple points. So this isn't just like um, uh, a ball and socket kind of thing where you think, well, it's just gonna go here. Uh, typical like antibodies will have, have a, an area that they traverse, and there's a lot of energy of binding at each one of the residues along that area. So uh, once the CAR T cells bind, they will divide, create more of their own. Um, they also become cytotoxic. So that's a major side effect of this. Now, keep in mind, you're saving somebody's life from the cancer. So the side effects are balanced against that, you know, rather cruel outcome. Um, so uh, these cells are becoming cytotoxic. They have to have the ability to kill the cancer cells with the side effect that you can imagine with the, with the host, the patient. Um, this has been commercialized successfully with two particular drugs. I don't, um, I don't have anything on what the companies are making, that is what's the, you know, the, the, uh, the, the residual value after the expenses from all of this. I suspect it's negative because this is still experimental. <coughs> But you know these these are these are companies that are in the market to make money, so that's part of their of their uh, thing. Um, Kimria, August 2017, that was the first one. So these are these are these are new. Um, we got something over 3,000 patients with acute lymphoblastic uh, leukemia were uh, diagnosed in every year. Um, they're currently waiting. Uh, Novartis is currently waiting to use Kimria for large B cell lymphoma. Um, the other company, Gilead, with ES Carta, for whatever reason, they charge a little bit less. If you looked on clinicaltrials.gov, you would find something around 240 ongoing clinical trials. And those are ongoing at major centers that have, uh, you typically have university hospitals involved. So they're you know, a lot of like super high level organizations with a lot of people backing them up to do these, these studies. All of the leading companies target B cell malignancies, like I said, they're not, they're not looking at, at glioblastoma just yet because you've got to knock down the easier targets before you go to the harder ones. <clears throat> so how does this process work? Um, I was really lucky to find this because I, I can't draw this well. But basically what you do they do is to take out white blood cells and they separate the T cells. They return the rest of the blood to the patient. The T cells are sent to a lab, and the lab is um, a, a way of, gen of, of doing the engineering on the T cells. It's, it's, it's a way of expanding their, their number in, you know, in, in, uh, in a controlled setting. So there's a particular virus that's used. Uh, I think it's a lentivirus that's used to, um, to uh, insert the gene into the T cells. So now you have engineered <coughs> T cells, and uh, the gene causes the receptors to appear on the surface. And that's the, that is the chimeric antigen receptor. You, you can go to your ancient Greek to find out what the chimera is. Okay. Um, anyway, these modified T cells are multiplied until you have millions of them. And they pack them in bags sterilely and they come in to, uh, to see the patient. So they typically have um, heavy duty chemotherapy to suppress the immune response because there is foreign material that's going to the patient's body in this. Um, and they also have to make room in the blood, bloodstream, which is putting a large volume on it. Um, this is sort of a, an idealistic cartoon of what will happen. The T cell sees receptors on a cancer cell and blows up the cancer cell. So, um, of course, life is always harder than cartoons, although some of those cartoon characters do get whacked pretty hard. 
So um, CAR T was FDA approved for these blood cancers, um, not yet for solid tumors, but there are a bunch of studies that are underway. Uh, this, all of this started back in 1992 when the first T cell engineering happened. The first generation CARs appeared shortly after that. Um, they're based on different uh, cell membrane receptors. CD19 was was demonstrated as a valid uh, target, which is CD19, as I mentioned before, is used in a lot of these cells. Um, the first in investigative new drug was filed for the CAR T back in 2007. That's, that's a very long time ago. This is you know, the, the average uh, pharmaceutical drug would be well on the market by now or be sunk by now. But this thing is not yet making money. It's, going through the, the, the proceedings to succeed. Um, the first case report of uh, in uh, NHL is 2010, so that's eight years ago. Um, and we still don't have glioblastoma on this timeline. Um, so we have now FDA approval for uh, CAR therapy for uh, both of these conditions, indications in pediatric patients. So why should you try CAR T with glioblastoma? One thing, we have also is lethal for every case for which it's diagnosed. Um, for another, is it, the incidence is, is rather high. It's very aggressive. It's, uh, it's, it steals the headlines. Um, and there's really no great alternative. There are alternatives that are not 100% sure. So, the medium survival of about 20 months <coughs> Whatever, whatever can be done with the current, uh, with the current methodology. Um, and it's highly invasive, as you know. And uh, it's one of the failures of oncology, uh, since we do not know how to treat it. It, it is invariably fatal. Uh, we know it is resistant to radiotherapy and chemotherapy. And because it's extremely hard to remove it all, because the brain is very packed and it's very intricate, uh, controls the body, controls very sophisticated functions in our body, uh, uh, we, we, we use immune therapy because it's very targeted and it uses mechanisms of tumor cell killing uh, that the cells are not necessarily resistant to. Not only us, but several investigators have explored a different way to harness the immune system, which consists of taking cells from the patient body, making it in the laboratory cancer specific, and then reinfuse them into the patients. So in the end, you re-engineer the patient's immune system to be more powerful and effective. So in this trial in particular, we take the immune cells from the patient's blood through a simple blood draw. We take them back to the lab in a special facility called the Good Manufacturing Practice Facility. And we genetically engineer them. So we give them a recipe to make a specific molecule that we have designed. And this molecule enables the cell to see some of the tumor characters that it would not otherwise see. We test them in the lab extensively, and once this is ready, we infuse them back into the patient's vein. We engineer these cells to express what is called a chimeric antigen receptor, which uh, renders these um, T cells specific for the particular cancer. So first uh, and foremost, it, it, the, the cells were safe. We did not see any life-threatening uh, side effects. So half of these patients that were eligible uh, had some uh, stabilization of the tumor for a long time, uh, and, and a number of patients made it uh, past almost, a, almost to the three-year uh, uh, mark. While uh, the results have been encouraging, and we are pursuing now additional studies to make them or improve their efficacy in the laboratory, we are very interested to further engineer these cells. So a 25-page insert that comes with your chimeria. This is all about um, mostly warnings of side effects. For example, cytokine release syndrome and neurological toxicities. Um, let's see, what else does it say? Uh, you're using, there are, there are warnings that you're using immunosuppressive antibodies because obviously you want the patient to not be responding to this. Um, warnings about hypersensitivity, serious infection, prolonged cytopenia, 
hypogammaglobulinemia, secondary malignancies, uh, the patient is not allowed to drive or to use heavy machinery, um, a lot of stuff. It's 25 pages of things like that. Um, there's this thing called the cytokine release syndrome, and this is something that happens when, um, when you have such a high concentration of cytokines in one place that the white blood cells that are responding to it, that are releasing the cytokines as, as a way of signaling to their partners to come and join into the fray. Uh, you, you get enough cytokines and, and you, you get this um, um, high level of potential neurological toxicity uh, and it can be life-threatening. So one has to, has to be concerned about that. Um, the indications of large B cell lymphoma, as I, as I mentioned, or B cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia, um, just a, a, a lot of issues. Uh, and I'm sure that these folks have memorized this thing, but I didn't. So if you want to read it, please do. Um, so I mentioned those other clinical trials with CAR T. Ah, there we go. Okay, so now getting back to the to the, uh, the title of this thing, CAR-T therapy for glioblastoma. Um, everything I found was very recent and not very conclusive, but it's, it's intriguing to go down that path. Um, in, in a trial that was, that was tested uh, and just published within the last couple of months, um, dexamethasone uh, was shown not to have any impact on anti-tumor activity. Um, they're, they're kind of working around the edges. How do you deliver? So intracranial delivery of the cells um, was better than IV administration because obviously the tumor is in the, in the cranial cavity. Um, intraventricular infusions were a potential benefit. So if you can go directly into, into the ventricles where you have more, more uh, you know, fluid space to work with. Another paper uh, was talking about um, the manufacturing of these cells using a different receptor, the uh, epidermal growth factor receptor 8. Um, they found that manufacturing and infusing them was safe, feasible. Uh, everything kind of goes down the path of how you can get it towards where the FDA approves it. So things have to be proven to be feasible, otherwise you're dead. If, if it's feasible, can it be done safely? Can you scale it up? Does it become a product? And at some point, the bean counters will say, well, what's the cost of production? And that, the FDA has the first crack at knocking it off. Um, all, of the, all of the patients who were tested in this particular study had at least a transient expansion of cells, these cells in their growth to blood, which is what you'd expect, you, or you'd hope at least. That you'd have, you'd have um, a lot of modified T cells in the blood that would be capable of taking on uh, the cancer. Um, they uh, had tested seven patients in this and found the antigen decrease in five of these patients uh, in, within regions of active GBM, and they're doing this by imaging. Um, of course, there are a lot more regulatory T cells that, that were found, as you would expect, because you're stimulating the immune response, the cellular immune response, so much. Um, and they, they concluded that the patient was gaining adaptive resistance to glioblastoma, which in the best of all possible worlds would be the outcome because you don't want the glioblastoma to recur. Obviously, there are many antigens involved, so that's, that's a, a very difficult target to attain. Uh, so, um, so what is the appeal of CAR T cells for glioblastoma? Uh, and I broke this into two groups. What, what are the brakes? What slows you down? What are the accelerators? What makes you want to go for it? Um, there are only three new treatments for approved for GVM since 2005. Those are temozolomide, uh, an antibody that I can't pronounce, and tumor treating fields. So there's nothing like this. And the reason for that is because it's so difficult to come up with something that's going to be uniformly useful. And Companies are going to invest, be investing hundreds of millions of dollars. So even beyond humanistic impulses, we have to deal with the uh, uh, pragmatists on the ground who are going to make sure that we have laboratories and pay people to do the work. Um, so what seem to be the accelerators in this? Um, T cells already can penetrate the blood-brain 
blood brain barrier, so they, they would have access. Um, they can infiltrate the brain diffusely, so they'll kind of go in uh, as, as their own way. Um, it was found in a study that uh, CAR T cells that were infused peripherally were able to traffic to regions of glioblastoma that is CAR T cells um, ha that had the EGFR receptor in, on the surface of the cell, antibody to the receptor. Um, and this, in two of seven subjects, however, not all seven subjects that were studied, um, and they were comparing it to the levels of peripheral blood. So it was really a broad range. <coughs> One of them had three times higher in, in the brain than peripheral blood, in the target region, and the other one had 100 times higher in the target region. And I don't know if, there's, if they made any effort to sort of normalize for the amount of glioblastoma or antigens presented or anything like that. Um, this obviously is kind of, this is all new to the people doing this work. Um, so. And they found that all of the tumor-associated antigens that were that were on the glioblastoma uh, were expressed by um, uh, these glioma stem cells. So the good thing about this, one of the good things about this as a treatment is it does have glioma stem cells that will then, you know, present the antibody, the CAR receptor on the surface to the cancer antigen perpetually because you have a, a, a backlog of stem cells that will continue to turn over as stem cells, eventually differentiating, becoming the effector cells that will kill the cancer in our best of all possible worlds. Um, so in immunotherapy for brain tumors, obviously we're redefining immune programs. That's something, you know, that's kind of the, the first day of class, immune programs. Um, it can work because the brain has a lymphatic system. Uh, uh, classical uh, uh, presenting cells are absent in the brain at a steady state, uh, but they can infiltrate the left brain during inflammation. Um, the use of CAR T cells uh, eliminates the need for energy presenting cells uh, because they self renew, meaning that. You have some that are at earlier stages of differentiation. They're not presenting the antigen. They're all kind of primed. They're going down the genetic path of becoming the mature CAR T cells that can see glioblastoma or whatever the cancer is. Um, so they're self-perpetuating because you have this pool that differentiates and divides into <coughs> non-differentiated cells. Um, and um, you also see a um, an increased levels uh, in uh, CSA, in the cerebral spinal fluid, of uh, pre-apoptotic molecules, that is, things that can cause cells to burst, apoptosis. Um, is there anything else? Well, here's uh, some pictures of uh, before and after. This was obviously in the spine. Before the infusion of uh, CAR T cells and after the infusion in the same location, uh, here are uh, the same deal with uh, patients in the brain. Before infusion, you see tumors in those same locations. The tumors have gone from day 108 to 225, um, and <clears throat> uh, they're infusing. So it is possible to do it. Uh, whether it's safe, whether it's something that could be expanded to the population of, uh, of patients, um, whether the costs can be maintained. Uh, those, those are all big issues. But it is there, and there are large companies that are putting hundreds of million do of dollars behind it. Um, so the conclusion of this is that uh, CAR-T therapy can work because you have an immunosuppressive glioblastoma environment, which allows the cells to proliferate. Um, uh, you have present macrophages and microglia, suppressor cells, and other cells that can kind of help out in the process. Um, however, the mechanisms of adaptive immune resistance to, in GBM, GBM after immunotherapy are not known. Um, I haven't looked for animal studies 
obviously you would do that first and I don't know how far that has gone. Um, but in, and then you have inhibitors of hypoxia and uh, deprivation of nutrients. And obviously without glucose, cells die very quickly and without amino acids, you don't produce any protein. So uh, they would be pretty useless without those two things. Um, there are mediators that are that are used uh, combined with small molecule drugs or checkpoint inhibitors that kind of uh, clear the path a little bit, and also targeting immunosuppressive cells. 